Promotional consideration brought to you by... Hi there, I'm Brian Finley. I've been working in the animation industry for over 20 years. Come join me as we explore the process of creating an animated cartoon. We'll meet some amazing people along the way, right here on Drawn To It, Behind The Screens. Hi, I'm out here today to get a little background design research in. That's going to be important because now we're going to move on to our storyboard phase. In our storyboards, we're going to implement our background design process. Storyboarding is the process of visualizing the script in a series of hand-drawn panels called storyboards. And a lot of people have actually called it the comic book version of a film. That's actually a really great comparison. I've been working on a comic book myself called Chicken Mecha Turtle. Pretty cool, big cyber turtle. It's gonna be awesome. But I find a lot of similarities between drawing a comic book and drawing storyboard panels. Now, both of them rely on simple drawings to portray a story that's been scripted out. And both of them rely on an artist's ability to compose within that dimension or border a dynamic shot that helps propel the story forward. So maybe you're saying to yourself, I can't draw. I can't even draw a stick figure. I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody has said that to me. But the truth is you can draw a stick figure. And if you can draw a stick figure, you can storyboard. And if you're a filmmaker, storyboards are gonna help you save time, money, and frustration. They're gonna help you plan out your entire film before you've even turned on the camera. How the camera moves, how close it is, how far away, is gonna make your audience feel something in your film. It can make them nervous, intimate, far away and epic. It's up to you. And to help us understand the difference between comic books and storyboards just a little bit better, I've asked a buddy of mine named Gregory Grondon, who owns a comic book shop in downtown St. John, to help us out. The good news is he's also a comic book creator. Here we go. Here we are at Heroes Beacon. Now I'm totally geeking out because in there is a comic book store and it's the perfect place to find out the difference between comic books and storyboarding. They actually have a lot in common. Let's go inside. So in episode one, we spent a lot of time talking about the script writing process, coming up with a story with a beginning, middle, and resolution. Um, and now here at Heroes Beacon, I'm surrounded by comic books. And comic books are sort of a little more simplified version of storyboards. Anybody as a kid, if you tried to make a comic book, you've already tried to storyboard. Okay, so Greg, thank you for being on the show. Really appreciate it. I mean, it's super cool to not only be a comic book creator, but the owner of a comic shop. Could you go into a little bit about your process? Um, for my comic, it's a web comic, so it's very much geared towards one page at a time. So the layouts are uh, kind of in the Sunday full page comic kind of. Yeah format when it comes to, to how I, I think about them. So I'll have the script for a page, the dialogue, and I'll take that and break it into, okay, this dialogue happens in this panel, this dialogue or action happens in this panel. So I'll know roughly how many panels I'll have on the page and then block my panels out accordingly. And again, where it's, it's more geared towards a, a Saturday morning comic style and mainly because my skill level is still a little on the low side, it's not terribly crazy in how the panel layouts are. It's actually right. fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Although I've got peers of mine who do essentially the same thing mm -hmm. and just get a little more elaborate, but it, the process is the same. They'll have their script and break it out into, okay, I need, yeah. here, here's what needs to go into each panel and then break it out accordingly, lay it out in the page accordingly. The panels are, are very straightforward, read left to right and row to row to row. Uh, some of the comic books in here, like uh, comics from DC, Marvel, Image, 
they get very complicated, right? The page layouts, like they're they're super, they're overlapping panels and all that kind of stuff. Yep. But yours is very straightforward, and I like that about it. You can just engross yourself in the story. Right. Um, have you ever thought about taking it to the animated level? We had looked at. We'd wanted to do some uh, a little promotional short for the comic. Uh, things. The the colleague that. Uh, was looking to look into it had to move so we sort of put that in the back burner for a bit um, my spouse is an animator i was sort of looking at it as well so one day down the road i'd like to see some of it brought to a comic format mm -hmm. the characters will likely need to be adjusted accordingly so they animate better because character in 2d doesn't always work as well in 3d right. yeah um and these aren't you know they're not modeled after people so it takes a little bit more to to take again a saturday comic character and turn it into something that works well in animation. Yeah, and it goes both ways. Some comic book creators, they work their way up to an animated thing, but then you have people who are who work in the animated uh, animation industry mm -hmm. and they start with a comic book because they know how much work animation is and yeah. they're like, nope, not doing that. I'm one person, I'm gonna make a book. And again, I, th I think my, my spouse is a little envious because I'm like, well, I just I just finished volume three and he's like, well, I'm, I'm still working on episode two and have been for months now. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, one frame at a time, that is how you create animation. I don't think the general public really appreciates uh, the amount of hours an artist will labor over it. Yep. You know, so it's really cool what you've done. Uh, Space Podacy, where can they find it? Uh, SpacePodacy.com, um, so it, it should be fairly easy to find. I, I have a Twitter for it as well. Great. It's on Tumblr and Facebook. Um, it's on its sixth year now, so yeah. And there's so much work, man. The That's first great. two volumes are on Indie Planet, with hopefully volume three once uh, I've got a, a friend of mine. I like getting uh, friends I know in the art world to do the covers. Yeah. So I've got another friend of mine who's working on the third cover. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Thomas did the, this cover here, and uh, my husband did the second cover. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I wish you much success with it. You've been going for six years now, so, I mean, the momentum is there. And uh, it's going to be exciting to see what, what new stuff comes up with Space Policy. And thank you for the, for the point of view from a comic book creator uh, side, you know, bringing a story from words to images. I really Problem. appreciate that. Thanks. We're going to be boarding today in Toon Boom Storyboard Pro. Now, if all you have is pencil and paper, that is totally fine. If you're going to be storyboarding though, try to storyboard at the aspect ratio, the size of the screen that your film is going to be. For our purposes, we're gonna be storyboarding at 1920 by 1080. That's just standard HD. When I'm boarding, I will literally just read this script over and over and over and I'll daydream and you, it's not uncommon to see me just staring into nothing. And if you go into a studio, you, you might see storyboard artists sitting at their desk just staring into nothing and getting paid to do it. When my brain eventually thinks of a shot for a particular part of the script, I'll, I'll take my idea and I'll draw little tiny thumbnail drawings of what my idea is. And I might do that for a couple shots in a row to get an idea of how they're gonna flow into each other. Uh, if I like how it works, I'll take those thumbnails and blow them up full size and draw over top of them where I dial in and fine tune the overall composition for the shot with the character posing is uh, to get going on that scene. So for instance, this establishing shot came to me while I was driving actually. I was thinking about the script and I wanted a shot that had camera movement, a shot that had depth as well as you know, the establishing shot should set up the environment, what the character is doing, the time of day. Uh, so I needed all that information into a shot that was, you know, a little bit interesting to look at. So 
So our character is Barry the Bear, and we see him here drawing a picture. And by using poses that are recognizable, even though he is an animal, we can give him human traits and have him look as though he is sitting there drawing a picture. Drawing perfectly on model for storyboards isn't usually required. In fact, sometimes the character designs aren't even finalized before the storyboard process has started. Now, in this case, we started our storyboards a little bit before the character designs and a little bit after. So just like most storyboard artists, we've come up with a shorthand for the character. So you can tell who the character is and what they're doing, but they're not perfectly on model. And of course, we always want to think about the scene that is coming before and after the current one we're drawing. If we lose track of our continuity, then the story is just going to start to not make sense. A lot of storyboarding is very subjective. Personal taste and style uh, vary from storyboard artist to storyboard artist. No two are going to approach the same scene the same way. However, if something is boarded and it works and it engages the audience and makes the audience feel something towards the film, then the storyboard artist has done their job. And now we're to the point, just like I promised in the previous episode, we're gonna play the animatic and we're gonna hear Nori Henderson's first draft of the sound effects. I'm really happy to share this with you. I'm excited about it. It's not gonna win an Oscar, but it serves its purpose for the sake of helping us demonstrate the animation process. Here we go, a good day to draw animatic version one. <laughs> Well, there you go. That is Nori Henderson's super rough, very first pass at sound effects for a good day to draw. It's the equivalent of throwing a whole bunch of pasta at the wall and seeing what sticks. And then from that, he will refine it and make it sound a hundred times better. Now for more good news. I'm very happy to announce that Curtis Ryu has signed on with us to help us with the animation production, A Good Day to Draw. Now that's really good because it gives us resources. So now that we finished our animatic and our storyboards are done, we're ready to go into the rough animation phase. We'll talk more about that on the next episode of Drawn to It, Behind the Screens.